two or more events. So imagine we have events A and B. We can set them up like this as a Venn diagram and we've got some notation to have a look at. So the probability of A intersection B is how you read this particular notation, but how we would usually say it is the probability of A and B. So that's meaning the intersection or anywhere where we could have A and B happening. So that's that middle section there. We've also got this um, notation, which is the probability of A union B, and that means anywhere where we could have A or B or both of them. So that is the whole of that section there. And this is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B, but that would count that middle section twice, so we need to take that away. Now, if we get this result, where we don't have to take away that middle section, that tells us that there's nothing in that middle section. There is no overlap, okay? And the same is um, true vice versa. So if we know that there's um, the probability of the intersection is zero, that means there's no overlap. So therefore, the probability of the union will be the probability of A plus the probability of B. So it looks like this. This situation is called mutually exclusive. So the events A and B are mutually exclusive. That means they can't happen at the same time. Now, if you're asked to prove this, you would just need to show one of these things. You can either show this thing here, that the probability of the union is equal to the probability of A plus B, or you can show the probability of the intersection is equal to zero. Okay, here we have this example. 28 students, 19 study maths, 10 study physics, two don't do either of them. So let's set up a uh, Venn diagram. Take that two out first of all, and we've got 26 left that do maths or physics. If we do the 19 plus the 10, that gives us 29. So we know we must have an overlap of three because we know that that actually has to add up to 26. So then we've got the 16 to make that total for maths be 19 and the seven so that the total for physics is 10. So the probability they study maths and physics is the intersection. That's three out of 28. Then the notation for studying only maths would be the intersection of maths and physics, uh, sorry, and not physics. Remember that little um, uh, dash at the top means not physics, it's the complement of physics. So that reads as the probability of maths and not doing physics. So that would be the 16 out of 28. And then state with reason whether the event that a student studies maths or a student studies physics are mutually exclu exclusive or not. Well, we can show that the probability of maths and physics is not equal to zero. That was part A. So therefore, it's not mutually exclusive. OK, results of some driving tests shown below. And we're going to work out some probabilities. So first of all, we need the total. So we've got 77 people in total. The probability that they are male is that section there. So all of the males, whether they passed or fails, fail came to 27 out of 77 total. And the probability that the person picked at random passed is that section there. So that adds up to 58 out of 77. And the probability that they are female or they passed, well, that would be that section there. So that's 70 out of 77. So female or past means they could be either or both. So we need all three of those um, numbers there. And a little something to finish off. 